Let me talk a little bit about uh, volcanic rocks now. And this is actually Cenubio de Valeron. I mentioned it yesterday. This is uh, a site where Aboriginal people were likely storing grain on Gran Canaria. We'll visit there in a few days if you're interested. It's not too far away from the port. And um, there we have these cavernous weathering patterns. And people exploited this. And of course, people were carving into the big rock formations there because pumice's rock is very soft. You can carve very easily. And here's Cueva del Rey on the left, which was the king's cave. It's quite spacious inside. And on the right-hand side, we actually have a cave restaurant. It's very nice and cool on a sunny day. So I recommend it. This is, of course, uh, one of the most famous cave sites or living cave sites in the world. This is actually in Cappadocia in Turkey, but you see similar things in the Canaries and in many volcanic regions, in fact. But not only have we dug into caves uh, or into volcanic rock, we also use volcanic rock as strategic um, outposts. Very frequently when we find um, prominent buildings being high up on a hill, they actually sit on volcanic rock. So here's just a few examples. Mont Saint-Michel in France is on a volcanic intrusion. It's a very weathering resistant rock. So the Regersburg in Austria or Edinburgh Castle, they all sit on volcanic rock. But this is not only a feature in Europe, this is throughout the world. Here, Indonesia, this is near Merapi volcano, one of the really nasty volcanoes. It erupts almost consistently or permanently and uh, a lot of people living surrounding the volcano. But there's also a lot of culture surrounding the volcano. The biggest Buddhist temple in the world, Borobudur, is there. There's also a Hinduist temple close by, Prambanan, and all of them are built of volcanic rock, and of solid volcanic rock. These are amazing structures. People must have spent huge amounts of time in, in, in manufacturing the, the, the elements for that, but these are built of these volcanic rocks. So volcanic rocks is a building stone. It's very important. And of course, this is something that the Romans exploited very early on. They even managed to actually make the first known cement, the Botsalana cement, which is a mixture of volcanic, reactive volcanic stone. And it starts when it solidifies to bind things together. And here's the uh, Pantheon in Rome. And well, this is 2,000 years old and it's still standing. Can you believe that? So amazing properties that volcanic rocks display. If you go to the Canaries, you will find many little churches, some bigger ones. They are, of course, also made of volcanic rock. Here's one of the famous ones in Arico village in Tenerife. And uh, this is made of red volcanic stone. And the volcanic stone is very sturdy, but it also has tiny micro bubbles. So it's not as dense of, as massive rock, so you can actually build taller structures because the weight is not quite so high. So, and this is something that you find in many volcanic regions. I uh, spent some time in France during my times as a younger researcher, and there is an image of the uh, cathedral in Clermont-Ferrand in the Auvergne, and that is, of course, also made of volcanic rock. Having said this, we are not only building things with volcanic rock, we're also preparing food with volcanic rock. Many of the millstones have been of volcanic origin. I've visited Mexico a few years ago. They still cut millstones from volcanic rock at Popocatepetl for a, a volcano, for example. And the Romans already used millstones that were produced in volcanic areas, and they traded them off to Scandinavia. The Vikings, for example, they bought millstones from the south of Europe, and uh, well, if you look at the archaeology, their teeth weren't quite so good. So partly because the millstones weren't up to scratch, so the Vikings always got the bad products. So then, of course, if you're in your kitchen, then uh, you might actually have cladding stones on buildings or uh, kitchen tops that are made of volcanic rock, nicely polished. This is usually rocks that form under the volcano, and they're easy to clean. They're non-reactive with acids, or at least with what we use in the kitchen. So, and therefore, this is actually also a very hygienic thing. Having said this, uh, we use vast amount of aggregates, and I cannot stress that enough. Each of us uses over our lives 
probably close to 50 to 100 tons of aggregates. And this is material that we add to concrete, add to tarmac. And this is actually the resource we use the most, sand and aggregates. We all use, on average, vast quantities of it. So, and here on the top, I'm showing a quarry where material is mined. This is in Indonesia. It's a fresh volcanic deposit, and they're mining this for aggregates. And if you think of Las Palmas, the city of Las Palmas here, the beautiful houses there, well, these are made of concrete. I promise you about 40% of this material is actually volcanic rock aggregates that have been added to the concrete. So, here's just a few impressions. And the Indonesians are actually quite nifty, I should stress that. You look at this and you think, oh my god, this is a bit random what they're doing. And uh, look at all the little uh, excavations there. But it's done with a purpose, can you believe it? Because they're actually doing this so that the next lava flow will have a rough bottom surface. So they're slowing down the lava flow this way. So they're purposefully creating what we call a sediment trap by mining it in an irregular fashion, creating friction at the base of a new eruption.